Well, I mean, I am here first and foremost as a journalist. I happen to be from the same country as Urban and Heidi, and and of course, just you know, seeing this, it's um, seeing the, the the monument. It's it is such a big tragedy, you know. Uh, but I am here to kind of understand what happened, and uh, I see it as my job to, to to do that, you know. So this story, this is something that a lot of Swedes will remember. A lot of Swedes will hear about this because this was such a shock, you know. Uh, I think a lot of the parents back in the 80s could really relate to this, you know, their, their kids going off on this uh, backpacking trip to New Zealand, a country where, you know, supposedly supposed to be like one of the safest countries in the, in the world, right? And then this happened, so I think it was, it was, a, it was such a big story in Sweden too, because it was not supposed to happen in, in, uh, in New Zealand of all places. I think a lot of Swedes wonder what, what actually happened here and what went on, and why there's an appeal coming up. And so I see it as kind of my job to try and explain to the Swedish audience, like, well, what, what do we know about this case? What do we, and most importantly, what, what don't we know? What conclusions can we draw from this? Because this is the place where the search and rescue worker, John Cassidy, along with his partner, Mel Noff, saw a man pitching a tent with a woman sitting next to him. When we approached, he had in, in his hand a small machete or ax that was no longer than about 15 inches. He was using it in his right hand. So just the fact that this woman was sitting there, kind of hiding herself from him, not saying anything, uh, raises a lot of questions. Um, and also, like, who was up here back then? Um, why hasn't anyone come forward saying, saying who it was? And, and from all I can gather, like, uh, from all I can see here, John Cassidy is an incredibly, like, dedicated man. He's someone who knows the bush. He keeps his amazing, like, detailed record of everything he does. So, I mean, there's no reason for him to lie about this. Och så ser han en kvinna sitta bredvid. Och han tycker liksom att det här är lite konstigt för han inte känt av yeah, det. Ja, men så basically coming here as a foreigner, there, I have so many things that I need to learn. And there are so many things that I need to, you know, try and understand. And, and uh, I just, you know, I just throughout this process, I've been wanting to meet as many people as possible related to the case. So I've done everything from, I've met, you know, lawyers and fancy offices in Auckland. And I've been to the working, you know, the local pub in Thames, starting to talk to people there. Been to Dunedin, talking to Arthur Taylor about the perjury trial. And yeah, it's been really interesting. But, you know, there are so many things that, that I need to like understand in order to tell this story, I think, and because um, because this this covers so many different topics. So it's been a big work trying to understand just how how things happen here, and then what the New Zealand like criminal justice system is, uh, what it's all about, right?